on this computer. All right, uh, so what'd you all think of the SQL basics challenge? Uh, yeah, it, it was good. good, except for the foreign keys ended up uh, tying me up for a bit. Yep. Yeah, foreign keys are kind of a pain uh, initially. Uh, anybody else? Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. <clears throat> and the the foreign key it took um, took like a lot of time. I was I was um, I was just trying to. Um, I think I was trying to do one of the, I, I did I did one for the um, I think student ID it worked, but I, I was trying to um, use the um, I, for the enrollment right. So he has like um, um, student ID and then he has like class ID. So mm -hmm. I was trying to uh, use the foreign key for the class ID too, but it didn't work. I tried um I tried. I tried like three different ways to do it. And then um, the last one, there, there was one of them that worked. The the one that, that um, I think the one that Anko taught us two days ago, the one that we use like, um, you have like, uh, like an ID that say FK underscore whatever user, or, uh, that that worked. Cause I, try, I tried so many of them and then I tried that one. So that one worked. Nice. So it took me, took me forever. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first time like dealing with foreign keys and join tables and all that, uh, it's kind of, you don't even like know what to Google even like, how do I relate these two tables together? Um, but awesome. All right. Uh, so the first thing I did, uh, I forked it over. We're at Tom Preet SQL basics. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clone that down by clicking the green button copy that down. I'm going to list everything out in my current working directory. Um, SQL is not in here. So it'd be like somewhere around there. So I'm going to get clone uh, SQL basics, I'm going to clear the terminal, list everything out. And now we have SQL basics right there. So I'm going to CD into SQL basis, uh, basics. So I'm currently in that working directory and I'm gonna code dash R space period and open that and reload VS code window. Uh, so the explore window is within uh, the SQL basics. All right, so let's open up the create schema. So we have a schema there and just kind of let's read through the word, uh, the readme. Uh, so Postgres supplies multiple databases, great. Uh, Postgres comes with a command. So create DB, database name goes there. So create a database name called school. So I can go ahead and open up the terminal. I'm gonna close the Explorer, uh, list everything out. All right, so I'm gonna PSQL uh, school to create a database called, called school. All right, oh wait, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's go back, so create DB, so create DB school and all right, so that makes sense. I've already got a database named school. So I need to delete that database. Uh, I forgot the command to delete a database. Um, can anybody uh, let me tell me the command to delete a database? I believe it's drop and then the name of the database. So drop uh, school like so. Drop DB I believe school. Oh, so bash drop command not found. And I heard someone say drop DB school. So let's see if that works. All right. So I didn't get any um, any indication on my terminal that anything happened. That's usually a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and press up to bring up the create DB school again. Click that. All right. Nothing happened. That's great. So I can enter into my uh, database uh, database by doing PSQL school, and now I'm inside my school database. All right. And does anybody know the, the SQL command? I don't even know if it's a SQL command um, uh, to see what relational or, or what tables I have currently within the school database. Backslash D. Backslash D. So if I type backslash D, I said, did not find any relations because I just created this database. I didn't, I don't have any tables in here. All right, so how do I get out of the SQL uh, terminal? Control D. Q. 
I can do control D or backslash Q to quit. So I'm gonna clear the screen, great. So let's go ahead and look at the readme again. So cool, I didn't find any relations, that's expected. So we need to create our schema. All right, we can just read through here. Um, so these are some different uh, column types. We have integer, decimal, varchar, um, character, which I've never really used before, text. Um, we might use that occasionally. Date and timestamp are pretty similar. Um, I think date, date and timestamp, um, yeah, the, just dealing with dates in general in databases are, are kind of a pain, um, especially if you're dealing like having to bring, display that date and stuff in the, on the front end as well. So I'm gonna come over here. looks like we have a create schema with already a, a table created for us. So we have this drop table if exists, uh, students. So we have this student table, students table that has an ID, serial primary key, don't know what that means. The first name, varchar255, not null. Okay, so what does this uh, pri the serial primary key means? I, I don't know what that means. Can someone, uh, let me know what, does anybody know what that means? It creates the primary key where each entry is, uh, the ID is created for one more than the previous. Yep. Is. Yeah, so the primary key essentially says, hey, this column, this ID, that's gonna be the primary key on this table. And the serial portion essentially means that um, as more entries go into the database, the primary key, it just, increases by one. Uh, and it's best practice to have the ID as the primary key. You, you don't want the primary key to be the first name, last name, birth date, address. Like, yeah, that's just not best practice. You always want the ID to be the primary key. Uh, what does not null mean? Means you have to enter something. Um, otherwise, it's just going to throw an error. Yep, that means essentially this column is required. So anytime you're inserting uh, data into the database, you can't have a blank value for first name, last name, and birth date. Right. So let's go ahead and uh, in create the schema. So we can PSQL, the name of the school or name of the database and an arrow or angle bracket pointing to the school. So like we're inserting some data into the, the school database. And we can say create schema. All right, notice table students does not exist. So it's skipping this first line, this first command. And uh, okay, it's dropping the table. So it's actually dropping the table, even though there isn't one. And then it's creating the table. So we can enter into our school database again. And now we can command D. And we have, looks like we have a student's table, student's ID sequence. Um, not quite sure what that means. I think it means just the ID, it's a sequential, um, the primary key is like one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. How do I inspect an individual table? The backslash D and then the name of the table. So backslash D and the name of the table. So I can inspect the student's table to see what columns and column types uh, they are. It's like, okay, we have a column, we have an ID, first name, birthday, great. Integer, great. And indexes, students, primary key, uh, binary tree with an ID. So the B tree, I think that just means when you query this, it utilizes the binary tree data structure to query it. All right, cool. Any questions so far? I have one quick one, just to kind of backtrack a little bit. To, to exit the database, it's the control D and the slash Q, but con control C quits the query in the current database, is that right? Control C? Yeah. 
I like when you I actually don't know. Does it like because yesterday when it had like the 200,000 weather observations, mine wasn't populating the whole thing like uh, Jack's was. And I think like like in Python, you hit control C to reset. Is that is that the same thing where you quit it'll the do that. within the database? Okay. Yeah, it'll do that. I had the same problem. I, I was able to exit that. It like exits the um, the continuous loop or whatever, all the information. So that's right. Got you. <clears throat> so as it's like querying, you press control C and it stops the query from. Yeah, if it prints out like a long list of stuff, um, and you have to keep scrolling down to get the bottom of it. It's like an endless scroll down. If you hit control C, it'll just exit out of that and just put you back into like the uh, query line. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. All right. So we have a serial. Okay. All right. So here are the tables we need to write. We need to create a table statement or we need to use the create table statement for addresses, classes, and enrollments. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have students. So let's create addresses. So let's create table and we it looks it's nice because we have the SQL, we're in a SQL file. So it has kind of like autocomplete. So we have addresses and tables. Uh, when you're writing raw SQL, tables should always be plural because they contain multiple entries of um, this, uh, like multiple addresses. So when you're creating, when you're writing raw SQL tables, when you're creating tables using raw SQL, make sure your tables are plural. So it looks like we have an ID. We can copy the primary key. So, all right, well, what else do we need? I'm actually gonna copy this stuff into um, like so, well, just so I have, I can reference this so I don't have to go through. All right, so we have addresses, we have classes and enrollments, they're all separate. So I'm gonna bring this up and so we can reference that. All right, so we have line one. Um, what should line one be? What kind of data type? Varchar, probably like 30 characters or so. So Varchar, uh, 30 characters. Have, have you ever, is anybody, does anybody have any, has anybody lived on a, uh, a street name that's over 30 characters? I think I have. Do you have, all right. <laughs> I, was, I was talking with Ash about this thing too. My grandpa used to live out in the boonies and his was like roll route, all this extra stuff. So I made mine extra long as well. Yeah, yep. I must say the whole, the old address was uh, Round Lake Hill Lanes. So it was like four words in the street. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just to be safe, I'm gonna just make this 255, which is the max uh, length that a Varchar um, can contain. So uh, let's since since varchars are varying, is there any reason not to just always make it the max length? Um, the only reason, I mean, the only reason is that to like, um, if you're that worried about database like memory and storage, that's the only reason. Um, but if you explicitly know, hey. Um, you know, for example, if, uh, like if I do city of our char, if you explicitly know that, Hey, there's no city that's in, in the, U in, uh, like say, if, for example, this is only for the United States. There's no city that has uh, character lengths of over 200, then just keep it at 200. Same with like state. If you only want, uh, bar char, if you only want, um, the input for a like state is to be like two characters. You just want the abbreviated state in your database and you don't want the entire state name. Um, then use two, like have an explicit length for that as well. Actually, that would be here rather than Varkar in that, just, Varkar in that case. No, you, you can just use Varchar. Um, uh, let's see. What is like the difference between character, fixed string length? You could use character. Variable strings. 
Um, I but character, if you know the actual field length, can be more efficient for storage, and you can come back and change it and stuff, and it doesn't have the same overhead that uh, Vartar does. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, you can use either or. Like I, I've actually never seen character used. It's usually var. Well, most of the time, it's always varchar. Um, so, but so just to clarify, the um, varchar, um, assuming that the input, say, um, say state varchar two fifty five, if they just input um, the two letters for the state, then it would take up two letters of memory. Like it doesn't take up two fifty five because it's variable. But if they were to say type out a full novel, then it would take a bunch of memory. Right? Is that yeah. how that works? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So var char is to 20. I think the max length of a state is 20 characters. Um, and then like zip code. Uh, do we want zip code to be a var char or an integer? Integer. <clears throat> is there a reason why you want it to be an integer? <laughs> I mean, I don't know of any zip codes that have the uh, letters in it. Right. So typically speaking, numbers are a, mo like most of the time, uh, like zip codes, phone numbers are m more often than not stored in the database as strings or as varchar. Um, actually, yeah, just in general. <laughs> Go ahead. Jack. Is it because sometimes they also have like that extra four digit lo locator on them? Yeah, it could be that. Um, so if you had like integer or you had the var char and someone actually put in like uh, 60605 dash whatever this is, um, that might not work. But just most of the time, um, uh, zip codes are stored as ver uh, as strings. And if you need to convert it to a number uh, on like the front end to do whatever, uh, you can go ahead and just, you know, do basic logic and just convert that string into a number. Um, all right. So, so for address line one, we want this to be not null. Uh, we don't want to likewise with these as well. Uh, all right. So we can delete that. So classes, we can create table, classes. Uh, we have ID, serial, primary key, uh, name, bar char. I don't know, different classes. Again, a lot of times just default to, I default to 255 because um, you never know uh, with regards to classes or what a class name might be called. So I'm just gonna default to 255. Uh, credits, so credits, I, I, this is where I might just keep it as an integer because you know you never have like a credit that has like uh, a letter in it, generally speaking, um, unless unless you like withdraw from it, I don't know. But I know that would be like the grade, I guess. Um, I figure the the important part would be that with credits you might expect to add and subtract from it, but with zip codes you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a good point. Uh, I didn't think about that uh, right away. But yeah, good job. Um, so, and if anything changes, we can always alter the database. Um, but typically speaking, you just like you do pseudocoding, uh, you really want to plan out your database schema before you go ahead and uh, create it. So you kind of want to think of, try to think of all the edge cases that you might, uh, that might incur um, just because you're not going to be dropping your database 
often. Like you should never be dropping your database. Uh, obviously when we're practicing doing this, it's easy if you mess up, okay, just drop the database and see the data. But if you're on your job at a job, you're not gonna drop the production database to fix a column or anything like that, or add a column or even like te test databases. You'll probably only drop the production database once, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> and you like, obviously you should, if you're at an organization that where you have that, the rights uh, to even mess, touch a production database, you know, the data side of things. High pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Super high pressure. Yeah. yeah. Like high pay. Uh, last one is enrollments. Oh, did I get rid of the enrollments? What need that? All right. So create table enrollments. Uh, we have an ID serial primary key. Um, all right. And then we have student ID. So the student ID should match the student ID in here. So does anybody know how to do that? Like at one line? So I'm just gonna. Do you have to make it a foreign key? Yep, so I need to make that a foreign key. I'm just gonna add grade here. Um, and I'll, I'll worry about these foreign keys. Uh, but all right, so the grade, should the grade be a integer, a? I think it's a var chart, cause I, I got, I'm like a lie. I looked at the, uh, the file, and it was all letter grades. I was assuming varchar. Okay, so we can do varchar. And also, how, how long do we want it to be? One. One? Two? two? Why? Plus, why? <laughs> pluses and minuses, A plus, A minus, B. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because you can be, have, can you get what, A minus, B minus. What about pass or fail or withdraw or yeah, drop you, or stuff? Yeah, that's also like you can have like, you can have like, Pass, uh, I don't know, pass. I, I ended up doing it as a Varchar 10 just to kind of catch like the weird, you know, withdraw and uh, like audited kind of. Okay. Yeah. See, see, these are all decisions that, you know, you should be, you should plan for. Um, I thought <laughs> withdraw was just W. Right. But I'm going to keep it with two right now just because A plus B plus. So, um, and so the your this is like so your your database types as well as the minimum requirements or like the uh, the like yeah the minimum requirements what this might be or like the maximum uh, so this is like this is your last line of defense of from a security standpoint. So it doesn't matter what front end validations you have going on, whatever in your logic, like on the back end, once things, once you go to save something in your database, um, like it, it's there forever, not there forever, but like this is your last security, last line of defense from a security standpoint in what a user can input into your database. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So uh, when, if you have a user that's trying to input something in your database that shouldn't be there, your, um, your database schema should be able to sanitize it and double check to make sure, hey, is this the right data type, length, et cetera, uh, before it actually saves into my database. All right. So student ID and class ID are foreign keys. Uh, so student ID up here. So um, I don't know uh, uh, Postgres. Postgres uh, foreign key example. So I've looked at this before. So I've put tutorials point, which is a good one. I'm just going to go into the actual Postgres documentation. So we have foreign keys right here. Uh, it looks like 
So we have create table cities and create table weather. It looks like, so here's a primary key and we have varchar. So the weather looks like it has a city, uh, city column on it with varchar of 80, references, cities, and the cities column. So it looks like, I don't know if there's anything else. So there's that, so that might be it. So I'm just gonna copy this over uh, as to see maybe that might work as an example. Um, I'm just gonna go back and look at other examples. So foreign key constraints. Uh, so it looks like I can contact ID. Not seeing any primary keys on here. So primary key contacts ID, constraint foreign key customer. All right, foreign key customer ID references customer. So I think this might be another way to do it. Not quite sure. Um, okay. Maybe that is also a way to do it. I'm just gonna bring that down here. Um, but let's see if this actually works as well. So student ID, so student ID is a foreign key. So it's supposed to reference the ID of a student. So I can do integer. And according to this, it references the students table and whatever column it needs as well. So references uh, students and I can put ID in there. And I guess same thing with class ID. So references classes and ID as well. And don't forget my commas. All right. Hey, Tom, for line 27, does it matter if you put the keyword key or not at the primary? Does that matter? Uh, it might matter, but thanks for catching that. Uh, that probably would have thrown an error. All right. So let's go ahead and clear that. And PSQL can go up and let's create a schema again. So it looks like they dropped the table. Cool. Created three tables are four tables. So I can PSQL school. And now I can, there we go. Um, and now I can actually inspect uh, enrollments. There we go. So now you can see in the enrollments table where it's got these two foreign keys. Got that. And we have some foreign key constraints. So it looks like this adds the foreign key con constraint. Awesome. So enrollments class ID foreign key is foreign key is class ID references the classes ID and same with the student ID references the students table ID. Uh, not quite sure if that this piece of code works, but I know this one does right now. Uh, so if I clear that and whoop, quit, I just want to create schema. <clears throat> All right, what the hell happened on it? So because you have the can, or the four four key re reference, you need to have cascade after your drop drop table statement. All right, so I got an error. Cannot drop table students because the objects depend on that. All right, so I heard something with regards to cascade. Uh, if I scroll up here, uh, you know, I'm a new developer. All right, use drop cascade to drop dependence objects too. All right, I don't know what that means. Uh, let's just, yeah, let's, I'm just going to Google this because uh, I don't know what that means. What do you mean it doesn't exist? 
So the error message contains a useful hint. If you do not want to bother deleting all dependent objects individually, uh, you can run drop table products cascade. All right, drop table products cascade. And I guess I should probably repeat that for the other addresses, classes, and uh, enrollments. So what does cascade do? Doesn't it delete the other wherever uh, table is connected to it? So that yep. way. No, yeah, you're exactly right. So if the, a table depends on it, it looks at that table, that uh, that parent table, I guess, depends on it, and it deletes that table as well. So it cascades like a waterfall. All right. So if I clear that, I run that again. All right. Let's see if I got those errors. So notice drop cascade to constraint enrollments. All right, drop table, drop table. All right. And then it just created the tables again. All right. Uh, let's look at that README. So scroll down. <clears throat> so inserting data. So let's go ahead and insert data. We can do PSQL C data. Let's actually inspect the seed data first. Because so maybe the way I created the table doesn't match up with what the seed data is. So insert into addresses, the ID line one. All right. Cool. Now let's just run this and see if that works. So seed data. So it looks like inserted, cool. That all worked. Um, nice. So let's go ahead and uh, if I run that, okay, it still works. Uh, see data, insert all the data. Um, I wonder if, all right. So, okay, if we didn't, if we had any errors inserting any of the data, we can we could have looked at our uh, our schema to see with, if there was any mis mismatches and then updated our schema, but there weren't any. So let's go ahead and do select star from students. If I clear everything. Uh, PSQL, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and create the schema again, just so we can clear all the data. So there's another way we can insert seed data into our school database. If you do backslash I, and then the name of, so we're already inside of our school database, we insert the seed data. This should also insert all the data into our database. So we're currently inside of school database. We can uh, select everything from the students table. Great. Um, so it looks like everything was created. Now I'll run the same select command on all your tables just to make sure everything. So we can select from uh, classes. All right, we have all the classes. Um, what else do we have? Addresses. So we have all the addresses and enrollments. There we go. Is this where that queue? Cool. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. It's probably I mistyped something, but when I, uh, like you said before, like um, when I did the, um, what is it, the arrow thing in terminal, it wouldn't allow me to do it, but then you told me to, told us to um, PSQL to the school so we can go into the, I guess the data file itself, and then you type in slash I, and then 
uh, seed data dot SQL. Is that correct? Yeah. Backslash I seed data SQL. Correct. And then I ran into a like an error address does not exist. I, so I'm just trying to look at yours and look at mine to see where did I mess that up. Addresses. So yeah, you can take a look there. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, so as far as the references set in the way that you did um, for join tables, um, um, you would still have to refer to the two columns that are already tied together, correct? For like a join table? Or is there like an easy way to, I guess I'm trying to wrap my mind around join tables a little bit better. Are you talking about when you're querying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover join tables uh, today. We'll, we'll do a bunch of querying as well. But yeah, so I know you can also do, just have these as like empty and then do an alter table. So the reason why this works, um, I'm just gonna quit that, is because when it goes ahead and creates the tables, it creates the students' addresses, classes, and then it creates the enrollment table where the student ID references the students table, which is already created. But if I move this enrollments table, say up above classes, and I save it, and let's just create that schema again. Uh-oh, notice, all right, error relations classes does not exist. So it's, it's coming here to create the enrollments and saying, hey, this classes table doesn't exist yet. So it throws an error and yeah. So if I PSQL school, notice how enrollments isn't created yet. So it skipped this one because, hey, there's an error in creating this table and then it created classes and it didn't go back and create the enrollments. So the reason why this works is because the order in which I'm creating the tables, um, essentially it's almost like trying to access a variable before a function before it's declared in Python or yeah, before it's declared. Um, that's pretty much what's happening. So if I do control or forward slash I, um, create schema again, now it works because I have the enrollments after um, after all of the tables that I'm referencing in it. Could you show us the uh, the way of doing that with the alter tables? Because um, that's how I did it, but it's still kind of confusing. <clears throat> uh, does anybody want to walk me through it? I, I haven't done that in a, quite a long time. Uh, so if I did that, uh, let's go ahead and alter table, uh, add column, add column. So if I did alter table, table name, enrollments, I didn't want to add column. Is there a way I can modify a column? It's Mod kind of weird syntax. I just figured out how to do it for the ad address. Uh, Type I think what you want is add constraint. Add constraints. So add yeah, so if, the, if the column already exists, you can create the foreign key relationship. So alter table. Let's look it then up. Then add, add constraint for the column that you're modifying. Add constraint uh, to student ID. Then you say foreign key student ID. Foreign key, like so, or is it F key? Uh, it works as all caps for foreign key. I, I, I don't know if F key works, but 
and then uh, parents and uh, the, the same column again, so student ID. Student ID. Needs to be inside of a parentheses, I think. Like so? And then, uh, yes, that, that is correct. And then re references and then the table and then in parentheses, the column. All right, students. So students. I'm just going to do students and see if that defaults to the primary mm -hmm. key. And then foreign key should have a space, not an underscore in it. Like so? Yes. All yes. Right. So I'm going to I'm gonna add all these on a separate line. All right, foreign key. Oop. And then add. So this is a, a SQL statement, alter table enrollments. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Alter table enrollments. Uh, instead of student ID, I'm going to do class. ID, references, classes. And then the, the constraint can be called whatever whatever you want it to be called. It doesn't need to be uh, one of the columns. In the... Cool, thank you. I fixed my code, now call that a foreign key, so I know why that constraint exists. Let's see, I'm gonna run that, create schema. Awesome. So it looks like that worked. I'm not getting any errors. Let's go ahead and then seed the database. Come on, there we go. Awesome, PSQL school. Uh, I'm gonna select star. And you, again, you don't have to have these in all capital letters. I'm just used to doing that this way. Enrollments, don't forget the, there we go, cool. So this is how you do it when you alter the table afterwards. Any other questions? Nope. What's the difference between those two methods? What do you mean? What, what methods? Because we did it in line uh, for like the student ID with the restraint there. Mm -hmm. And then now we're putting it separate. Oh, what's so, the difference between the two? I saw earlier that you moved it and didn't work. So with the second one, does that matter where the table is at? It always would catch it no matter what. Exactly. So notice how I created the, or I'm creating the enrollments table uh, before a classes. So if I, before when I did it in line, it would throw an error and just skip the enrollments table altogether because the classes table wasn't created. However, here, it doesn't matter what order the tables are created. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and see if this works. So see data, create schema. See, it doesn't matter anymore. So it just creates all the tables and then it modifies all the tables. Now, if I obviously had this alter, like in the middle. <laughs> it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Gotcha, okay. A clear see. error relation classes doesn't exist. But that's why you should always have, whenever you're modifying tables, just have it at the very end. Cool. All right. Gotcha. That makes sense. Appreciate it. 